What is up engine heads? Today we'll be checking our piston to valve clearance. Now your piston to valve clearance is an extremely important measurement inside your engine that should be checked and verified every time you modify something on your engine that can affect your piston to valve clearance. So for example, let's say you switch to higher lift and higher duration camshafts, or you deck the block, or maybe you shave the cylinder head, or maybe you use different pistons, or maybe you increase the diameter of your valves. All of these things can affect your piston to valve clearance. So it's always always a good idea to check and verify it when you do significant modifications to your engine. Today I'm checking my piston to valve clearance because I'm using different pistons in this engine. This is my 1.6 Toyota 4 AFE engine that I'm turbocharging and because I'm turbocharging it I want to use different lower compression pistons in it and I want to use the pistons from the Toyota 4 AGZE engine. Now these two pistons, my stock ones and the 4 AGZE engine are different because the valve included angle of 4AF and 4AG engines is different. Your valve included angle is the angle between your intake and your exhaust valves and it can significantly influence the shape and size of the valve cutouts on your pistons. As you can see, G engine valve cutouts are deep and steep. They're kind of deep on this end but a bit more shallow on the other. Compared to this, F engine valve cutouts feature a more uniform depth throughout and because of this there's a possibility that F engine valves might not agree with G piston valve cutouts. Now when it comes to 4 GZE pistons I have two options, low compression and high compression. I'll likely be going with the low compression ones but I still haven't fully eliminated the high compression option. I'm pretty sure that the low compression pistons shouldn't cause any issues with piston to valve currents because as you can see the deep dish of these pistons means that only the deep end of the valve cutouts remains present in these pistons. On the other hand the scenario might be very different when it comes to the higher compression pistons. So today I'm checking my piston to valve currents before making my final decision. But even if I had already made my final decision to go with the low compression pistons I would still first check my piston to valve currents before purchasing these pistons. Because assuming something is going to be okay based on eyeballing things from a picture is the path to disaster when it comes to engine builds. Never assume anything, always check and verify and that's what we're doing today, checking and verifying. Now as you have heard I do not own any 4 gze pistons yet, I haven't bought any of them yet, but I do own this. This is an old used 4AGE piston, although it's not the same as the 4AGZE piston, it has the same valve cutouts at the same angle. So it's going to be useful for predicting my future piston to valve clearance. To measure my piston to valve clearance I'll install the stock 4AFE piston into board number one. I'll use this piston as reference. I'll install the 4AGE piston into board number four. I'll set both pistons to top dead center. Next I'm going to coat both piston tops with a bit of lubricant. I want to prevent the play-doh that I'll be using in the next step from sticking to the pistons. <sighs> next I'm getting the play-doh and spreading it across the valve cutouts. Don't spread it too thin or too thick. 4 to 5 millimeters should be okay. After this you can install the head gasket and the cylinder head. But before installing the cylinder head I'll also coat the valves with a bit of lubricant to prevent them from sticking to the play-doh as well. Next I'll install the cylinder head bolts. You do not need to torque them to spec but they should be pretty snug. After this it's time to install the cams. Once the camshafts are in I'm going to make one full revolution with both the intake and the exhaust cams. A word of warning. 
do not rotate your camshafts with your pistons at TDC unless you are 100% certain your engine is a non-interference engine. Otherwise, you are risking bending your valves and ruining your engine. If your engine is an interference engine, you are going to align all the timing marks and you are going to install your belt or chain and only then will you rotate your engine and check piston to valve clearance. I'm checking my piston to valve clearance in this way because I want to see what would happen in the worst possible case scenario of my timing belt braking. I also want to give the valves the opportunity to get as close as possible to the G engine piston so I can get an accurate insight into the relationship between the valves and the different cutouts of the G engine piston. I'm rotating the camshaft slowly and I'm ready to stop at any signs of unusual resistance because the different piston might actually make this engine an interference engine in this case. However, I have felt no unusual resistance, just some very mild resistance probably from the Play-Doh uh, being squished into place. After this, you can remove the cams and the cylinder head. Next, I'm cutting away the Play-Doh at the middle of the valve cutout. And then I'll get my caliper gauge and measure the thickness of the Play-Doh. So the situation is as expected on the stock for a FE piston and the clearance is uniform across the entire valve cutout. We're getting some relatively tight numbers, but you have to remember this is belt breakage scenario. These numbers will be further reduced with the engine at operating temperature and the head gasket fully compressed, but still there would be no contact between the valves and the pistons in any scenario. But things are pretty different on the G piston. As you can see, we have a big clearance on the deep side of the valve cutout, but a small clearance on the shallow side. Now the exhaust side is okay on both the deep and the shallow sides of the cutout, but it's this part right here on the intake that really worries me. As you can see, this clearance is very small and this one millimeter would be further reduced with the engine at operating temperature and the head gasket fully compressed, making this part here pretty risky. I'm not sure if the engine becomes interference right here in certain scenarios, but again, this is pretty risky, which means that the high compression for a GZE pistons are also pretty risky. On the other hand, the low compression GZE pistons are going to give us a pretty giant piston to valve clearance and some room to upgrade to higher lift cams while still retaining the engine in its non-interference form. All of this demonstrates that the low compression pistons are definitely acceptable and leave a very big margin for error. And there you have it, a quick and simple little guide on how to check your piston to valve clearance. Again, if you're doing this on an interference engine, you are first going to align all your timing marks, install your belt or chain, and only then are you going to rotate your engine. I checked my piston to valve currents the way I did because my engine is non-interference and because I wanted to see the relationship between the valves and the pistons even in the worst possible case scenario or in the case of extensive modification to the engine timing and camshaft lift and duration. So you're doing everything the same except what I just explained. So what has this revealed? It has revealed that the low compression 4A GZE pistons are definitely a okay and a very safe option, leaving a lot of room uh, for all sorts of different modifications and a large margin for error. On the other hand, the high compression 4A GZE pistons are also acceptable, but they're a bit more risky. And because of this, I'll be avoiding them because I want to leave all my options open and some options in terms of engine modification would be too risky or maybe even unacceptable with the high compression for a GZE pistons. So there you have it. That's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, found it useful and informative and I hope it helps you understand why the piston to valve clearance uh, uh, process is important, how it's done and how you can do it yourself. So. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4H.